All right, so first thing is you can introduce yourself if you want. Why are you? I'm tired. <laughs> So I'm Frank Savig. I'm a graduate student at the University of Washington in the immunology program. My name is Michelle. I'm also a graduate student at the University of Washington. All right. Okay. So, are do either of you consider yourself activists? Can you stand closer together. No, no, I don't consider myself a professional activist. No. no. Or even a just a, is that part of your identity being an activist? No, no, no. I don't part of my identity. Okay. All right. So, are there any issues, uh, major political issues or otherwise, that you'd want a chance to? speak about to share with the world? I think in this country especially science den denialism is on the rise and that manifests itself in several different ways including anti-vaccine movements, you know, anti-GMO movements and things of that nature and I, I think there's this disconnect between people and the scientific community that needs to be reconciled and part of it lies in the scientists. I think sometimes we're considered more aloof um, and we're not seen interacting with the public more and It'd be interesting to sort of think about ways in which we can improve this dialogue between people in the scientific community. Do you have ideas for how to do that? I think from the scientist side, we could definitely encourage more outreach and you know teaching and instruction and just to, to sort of improve our image with the public. And perhaps people will be more trusting of science and scientists instead of celebrities that go on, on TV and, and make all sorts of ridiculous claims. Yeah, I think a, I think a, I think a major issue with like science denialism and uh, you know, not really believing in the scientific consensus is a couple. Because it has to do a lot with, uh, I guess, not really being familiar with the field. You know, a lot of people say like, oh, the scientific consensus on like, global warming, but they like they're skeptical about it. But really, I think a lot of it boils down to not really being um, informed with a lot of uh, ways that scientists come up with their um, conclusions and how they arrive at them. And I think. Especially uh, going through the education system in America, I think really need to focus more on being more uh, literate in science. There's a big issue with scientific uh, illiteracy in America, I think the world in general. So um, I know I was very skeptical about a, a lot of uh, scientific uh, consensus opinions before I got into science in general. Um, I just think it's, it's something that people need to trust the scientists on, but also look into it themselves. And, I think the skepticism is good, like there's healthy skepticism, but it's uh, something I think that uh, I think the country should work on, maybe from a starting the education standpoint. Um, so, yeah. so, do you guys think the uh, mass media is helpful with this, making people understand science better, or, <laughs> no, or not? not at all. There was, I think there was recently a, uh, a segment on, on John Oliver just talking about how, because the media really wants to make sensational stories and something people are really going to be interested in. Uh, and a lot of times they leave out the details and make these big claims about something that really a study focuses on something very specific. It really isn't trying to make these overarching big claims on like health or like, you know, you see connections like, oh, like, if you have like one slice of bacon a day, like, your increase in colon cancer goes up, but really what the data says is not really that, you know, it's a very small increase and they just want to simplify things for the big impact. Um, and I think, that, again, that boils down to being uh, literate in science and what really goes on with these studies, what they're actually saying, um, because a lot of these big claims aren't really um, something the media should be making because it's not what the scientists are saying. Yeah. So, and what about, um, you can either comment on that or with the influence of money in politics. Do you think that is affecting the uh, struggle with science literacy? I think even at the congressional level, there are people making decisions that don't have any sort of training in science and thus are influencing our policies. I think a lot of the people who influence policy, um, of course, are trained as lawyers and, and career politicians. And there are very few scientists that are in Congress and involved in Congress that can actually give professional advice on legislation. And I think if we can encourage that to happen and sort of sort of change the composition of con Congress to include more people from various expertises, not even including science, but other disciplines as, as well, I think it would it would definitely help to make more well-rounded policies and decisions at the, at the congressional level. Great. All right, thanks. And thanks. just for the camera, could you guys just say, uh, yes, you have permission to use this audio and video? Do you have permission to use audio and video? Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. What's have the a good podcast? Oh, I'll give you a card.